it is downtown Toronto on a lovely Wednesday afternoon. Listen to those 80 board gamers. And it is go time. Mumbling away in the background. We got PTL Finals Season 11 happening right now. Whoop, whoop. And we are about to get kick, things kicked off in a few minutes here. Coming to you live, we are the PTL. I'm Timbo Slice. I'm Devin Monkhouse. And we're going to be casting this epic action here featuring none other than some of the new uh, Saw Gerrera's Ty Reaper wave cards. You see any of that on uh, Steven's list? Uh, I don't see anything on Steven's list. We're going to get to Steven's list. Don't get ahead of yourself, all right? This isn't prom night. Wait, what's, uh, what's, what's, my chat, what's my name in chat now? Pole Dancer? Pole Dan no, it's Sonic, Devin Sonic the Pole Hog. Sonic the Pole Hog. There we yeah. go. Our two players tonight have fought and carved their way through all of their competitors in this PTL Season 11. Including each other. These boys. Now, Steven's played in the league before. This is his second season of his, like, renaissance in X-Wing. Yeah, but his, he, his rookie grew back. It's like if you don't get laid for long enough. Yeah, if you don't play for a couple seasons, you count as a rookie again. If you haven't played in two seasons, you count as a rookie. So he hadn't played in a bit. He was uh, he played in early in the league and then like a little in the middle and then he took a couple seasons off and then he came back, and he's like blown his way to the top. Perry, excellent player, uh, rejoining Toronto from uh, from California. Original Toronto native. Original Toronto native. A breath of fresh air to our club has been just a top guy to have around. Had to carve his way through his epic X-wing partner along the way, Evan Cameron, a few weeks ago. Absolutely. And so uh, these boys duked it out a couple of weeks ago with Perry winning for the, uh, the newbie challenge for a full set of PTL range rulers, which I have forgotten again tonight to bring for Perry. So it's, uh, it's fine. It's good. It's great. We're going to have some really interesting interactions here between uh, Perry's ships and Steven's list, which I understand he is uh, um, uh, in, 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 uh, adopted from some of our... Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about Steve's list in a bit. We're going to actually have Steve on to chat, but he is using a list popularized by a, a former French national champion. Okay, well, let's get our pregame chat going. What's up, Tim? Hey, Barry. How you doing, big guy? Oh, boy. <laughs> Here it comes. End of the long road of the PTL, man. Uh, talk to us about the end of your first season. How you feeling? Well, not bad. I actually just realized walking here that Steve and I... Um Steven actually played the most games in the PTL allowable. Like it's we true. Had, we, had, we win seven games plus these three plus the newbie match. That's yeah, the newbie total. match was the, the kicker. Um, yeah. well, talk, talk to us about what you may have learned from playing him in the newbie match. Um, I, I think in the newbie match it was kind of the other way around where I was, I think I my list kind of overpowered what he brought. And in this case, I think it's the other way around. So okay. this is going to be... It's, it's going to be, a, I got to really think about this one. Well, there's some pretty overt examples of what Steven's list has in terms of strengths against your list. Mm -hmm. Can you share any insights as to what you believe your list has in terms of strengths against his? I definitely have more firepower in terms when I, when, I, when I can get close. His agility isn't so great. So potentially, if I charge at him, I could erase at least one ship off the board. And I think it's critical to get at least one of those ships off the board as soon as possible before he starts laying in TLTs and bombs and all that all that other stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steven Buey, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining us this evening on our little pregame chat before you go. Congratulations on your uh, progress uh, in the PTL <laughs> oh, season so far. And uh, how are you feeling about being in the finals tonight? Uh, I'm nervous, definitely nervous. Uh, I've never played in the PTL before. Uh, so, you know, I've been pretty lucky so far with, with the matchups I've gotten and the dice I've been rolling. Um, so I think this is a good matchup for me. I think I'm actually sca more scared of his Scarif-based pilot because of the IMB slicer and uh, and the jam token. I think it can really mess with my harpoons and things like that. Uh, he still has a lot of repositioning, so the proton bombs, if I can get them off, they're going to be powerful, but if, I, if not, then that's how I'm probably going to lose the game. So would you um, say that the uh, the ISB slicer is your biggest threat, or would you say that... Well, it um, prevents the harpoon from, like, being taken, like getting the harpoon off, okay, and then that prevents the mangler cannon from triggering the harpoon, and so I think if he gets gets in range two, which he will with the, um, what's that with the, uh, the sloopy sloops? Yeah, I mean he's got he's got two re he's got a repositioning with the ship, like the initial um, advanced ailerons, and so that's going to really help him to get to get movement across the board and get out of a lot of 
a lot of uh, danger. Coming up against something like this that you may not have a lot of reps against, just first glances, target priority. You got any insights as to who you're feeling needs to die first? Oh, uh, I'm going to say Nim. Okay. Just because of the TLT. Now, I could argue for 10 Nim because Sabine's on him, but at the same time, I can arc dodge uh, the B Wing. This, the um, the Skurg may be a little bit trickier. Any insights you can share into us about rock deployment, why you chose to put your rocks where you did? Um, yeah, I wanted to keep the rocks like fairly like round range two apart so I can place a bomb in the middle so he has to go, it's harder for him to get around. Um, you know, the, the bombs have a, like range one of the bombs, actually a fairly large area. It is. And, uh, it is indeed. And so it's going to be hard with some of his ships to dodge that. I mean, his Whisper is, is in trouble because of my PS10, but the repositioning of his cloak, it really helps him to get out of arc um, and you know hopefully not take any shots at all. Uh, the TLT will still come to effect, but uh, uh, I, think, I think it's a hard matchup, especially with the Whisper and the Inquisitor. Just the automatic damage, uh, taking crits. You know They only have two uh, hull, so I think it's a, I actually do believe it's a rough matchup for him if I can get the things I want off and to affect him. Uh, final thought, what's your uh, favorite thing about the PTL? Oh, I got to fly all kinds of weird stuff this uh, this season. I'm uh, looking forward to the next one to fly even more jank. It's scraping the bottom of the jank tank. I love yes, it. it is. is there anybody back in Cali or uh, anybody here that you want to give a shout out to tonight? I'll give a shout out to the uh, old crew at the Perky Nerd in Burbank. What's up, guys? Um, and the boys on at uh, Next Gen. Uh, always rooting for you guys and the mine not open. Well, we're always uh, we're always happy to have you here in Toronto, man. Thanks for joining us. Good luck tonight. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, one last question for you before the game starts. Um, what is your favorite thing about the Prototype Toronto League? I like the fact that it forces you to play like a lot of different lists. Um, I've had a lot of ships, and I've like literally never played them before. Like, you know, I tend I tended to before like I like scum. I like to play the same thing until I I'm sorry until I you know, feel I'm really comfortable with it, but this gets you out of that comfort zone, and then you learn a lot of what other lists do, and then when you do play, you can better uh, go against that, you know, so, yeah. That's great, man. Well, listen, honestly, uh, best of luck, fly straight, have fun. Okay, thank you very much, Tim. Okay, so we've got a couple of cards in play uh, from the new... Director Tyler Krennic Salazar right there Park. on board, so he's very complicated. And, but he is on Whisper, so he will be essentially acting as a fire control system for Whisper, allowing him to use Collision Detector, keeping Whisper l somewhat lean. I've also seen advanced sensors coming up onto Whisper and uh, Sensor Jammer coming up into Whisper with Krennic. Now that gives Whisper, I'm assuming, an extra shield. Uh, we'll have to talk to the producers, see how we're going to assign that. And uh, Although it could be on a different ship, so we'll have to find out... Well, Director Krennic has definitely Where assigned the optimized prototype uh, condition card to Whisper. Okay. Uh, the condition tokens on the back of the Whisper's base plate there. So we've got Perry starting a match off. We got time off and they go using his aileron for Reaper. Reaper, of course, moving at PS one. Perry he deployed having, at eight. Yeah, exactly. Deployed at eight, moving at one. Funny enough, of course, Perry, although he has one more ship, still has less pilot skill points than Stevens list. He does. He does. <laughs> Now, that, uh, that Reaper, I've been flying the 2.0 Reaper in 1.0. So I've been flying the medium base ship with the 2.0 dial in 1.0, and it's been a blast. Blasphemy. Oh, man. I, I want I want the practice with the ship. I want to I wanna get the her done. That, you were the kid that ran downstairs at Christmas morning at like 4 a.m. and opened all the presents before your parents got up, didn't you? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Timbo. No idea. Okay, so we've got Quiz running his way up the top of the board there. Uh, Look at that. Travis did some some of his uh, producer magic, got an extra shield there on the Whisper. Oh, that's beautiful. He was coding away for while we were doing the interviews. And look at that. Boom. Fixed. Got it. It's like 6,000 lines of code right there, folks. Beautiful. Like three, but like you got to get them in the right place. That's important. <laughs> Whisper putting yourself in an interesting position. I'm going to be unable to decloak right and thus spread the fan on Steve's list. I don't think that's, I don't think that's Perry's plan. He's got to get tight. And he's got to get in, and he has to alpha one of those ships off of the board right away before they get a second shot and a second proton bomb. Well, that was definitely the insights he shared with us in his pregame chat, Dev. He, he was telling I, us I that was out. not privy to that. I know. You were. You can't fit three humans in this little corner. It's fair enough. But what he was essentially saying to us is is quite right. I mean, he, he, he has to try and keep all his guns on the same target 
Uh, if both of these ships are allowed to shoot, they're, they're going to cause some serious damage to these high agility ships that rely on their green dice. Wickedy whack. That's it, man. I mean, Whisper is a tank, but if you if you bomb her once, what is it? Uh, there's seven direct hits in the deck. Yeah. And there's 33 cards total. Now, I'm unfamiliar with the 1.0 Reaper dial, but it does have a three forward only? I believe it does, yes. I'll double check that. So, I mean, he'll be able to do essentially a five forward with the Reaper, a seven forward with Whisper, right? Yes, D Two from the decloak, yeah. one from the extra base, and then the four forward, because the Reaper, there's the. The Whisper does not have the Whisper. The Phantom doesn't have a five forge to the four forge. It just has a four forge. Although right. it has the tie dial in, in all other ways. Yeah, same K turn, same turn, same colors. Absolutely. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, the uh, the quiz, three bank? I think so, yeah. One bank? One bank, he, uh, I don't know, the Inquisitor looks like he's going to eat double proton bombs. And to me, that is terrifying, Mr. Slice. Terrifying. <laughs> I can understand. Any list that contains the, the word slicer, I'm on board with, Def. I mean, uh, uh, there's not much to say. I don't know. You, you, we must. You must have talked about Steve list, Steve's list in the in the interviews, but there's not much to say. He's got TLT. He's got Mangler Cannon on Ten Num. He's gonna be pushing crits through on Whisper. He's gonna be putting, pushing crits through on on Inquisitor. He's gonna be bombing in proton bombs. It's just all terrifying all around. Like I'm. So, uh, when was the last time you saw a 50-point B-Wing and been like, oh, God, I'm terrified, and not like... Wave 2? <laughs> wave 2. I don't even think you could put 50 points on a B-Wing in Wave 2. Uh, right. You could. You could slap an HLC and, like, outmaneuver, and, and you, you could yeah, load her up. You could load her up. Expose in an HLC or something a like shield that. Shield upgrade, hull upgrade. Sure, yeah. It I still mean, had all those slots, buddy. Well, it's got one more slot than a regular B-Wing, even with the old title, because Sabine adds the bomb slot, right? Fair enough. I mean, uh, I don't really like this move from Perry. I think he might eat two proton bombs here. I feel like if he'd gone a little bit slower or, or maybe come in, hid behind the rock and come in later with the Inquisitor. But uh, like you said, he wants to get uh, as well, much damage in as quickly as possible. I mean, you've got Captain Nim here who can um, genius trajectory. No, he can't genius and trajectory simulator. He can only move and then drop. You can't move and then trajectory simulator. So bomb. he could... So what Perry was doing there when he was measuring for target lock is he was checking, checking. I'm assuming if he was going to be in proton bomb range, which so, we now know he definitely is. Yeah. And unfortunately, because the Inquisitor and Whisper both only have two hull, if that proton bomb hits, there is a seven in thirty-three chance. Well, that's well, both Nim and Tendum have trajectory simulator. Both of them will be trajectory simulating a proton bomb, and the Inquisitor will go away this round. Yeah, if, if both Proton Bombs hit. I'm not convinced the B-Wings tra Trajectsim uh, Bomb hits. I am. I, NIMS is, is what I'm curious about. But uh, we There's will... There's a lot of perspective we're losing as well on the on the depth of the thing. I think that... We should know, tell them they're playing on the wrong end of the board, Tim. Well, we you know what? We, <laughs> the cast, and there's the cast Trajectory is Simulator players. 1. It's not for us. Proton Bomb 1. Smack dab in the Inquisitor's face. Yeah, that Inky's not going to like that. Kablamo! Kabloom! Now, interestingly enough, in 2.0, 2 2.0 proton bombs are a little bit more balanced. By Inquisitor. Yeah, they go. They don't go under the shields in 2.0. They just deal a crit, right? Why do bombs still exist in 2.0, Tim? Because there's a new phase just for them. There's no longer... This would never happen because in 2.0, the bombs would already be down before the Inquisitor moves because they have to all get deployed in the system phase. Sure. <laughs> interestingly I'm still enough, not in it's just interesting enough as well that Ten Num's done the bank here uh, putting himself right in front of the Reaper and Whisper um, so he's going to be legitimately eating a lot of damage and putting a crit through on Whisper yeah especially if Nim's TLT strips Whisper's shields um, so here's multi-phasic camouflage so let's see what Perry rolls nope it's coming up Millhouse Okay, so the Num's taking the lock on the Reaper. It's an interesting choice. Yeah. I mean, I can understand why Steven believes that uh, Steven believes that the Reaper's... No, that's the interesting. In uh, Nim did not drop a proton bomb. 
I'm sure he's saving it. Maybe he thinks that the direct hit will kill the Inquisitor, and he's just going to use the force to make sure the direct hit comes And multi-phasic coming out again now. These boys, Nim does have a harpoon missile, so I'm imagining the Reaper's going to eat a harpoon missile, so that's not something Perry wants to happen. And he's, I bet he's wishing he's got the, uh, you know, Papa Palps in there right now, palping a crit on the multi-phasic camouflage. It would not be the worst thing to happen at this point, sadly. It's not a, it's not a bad upgrade, not in the slightest. So the multi-phasic uh, camouflage is not once per turn. Did Perry roll for the second one? He did not. No. Okay, so we're measuring for the bomb damage here. And it looks like the only person affected by the proton bomb is the Inquisitor. The crit is not a... Oh, it is a major explosion. Major explosion oh, yeah. on the Inquisitor. We could have a dead Inquisitor right here. No, he rolled, rolled a, crit. a crit. No bueno. Inquisitor's alive. We're we didn't... I, I didn't... We didn't see what uh, Stevens was on Nim, Or was it Ten Numb? The uh, damage from the proton bomb has been applied to Nim. Yes, but which which? No, it uh, did hit ten them. So, uh, it did hit ten them. Yep. Okay, stun pilot for Nim. Uh, is it Nim? Ford Eye harpoon uh, missile here coming from Nim on the Reaper. Yeah, it's on ten them. Yep. So this is the harpoon missile from Nim on the Reaper, spinning the lock. Gross. Rolling four. Reaper gonna roll his Gross. evade. Two. Uh, no, he does not have lightweight frame. No. Nope. Raper going to take four damage there, two shields, two hull, leaving it with four health left for the follow-up Mangler cannon. Now, the reason he did not roll for the multi-phasic camouflage is because he already had a target lock, and once you are already target locked, yes, you, you cannot, cannot roll, for you it. roll for it. Yes, of course. Sorry, folks. New card. The Reaper now harpooned. The Reaper's harpoon, which would be great for Ten Num's Mangler cannon here. That could be the end of the Reaper if he doesn't roll an evade on that Mangler cannon shot. Well, he's, he's got a chunk of uh, life left there. I mean, sure. <laughs> the Mango Cannon can only do three. Steven going to uh, take his shot with the Mango Cannon. Rolling average. Okay, so, got 10 them shooting at the Reaper. Going to spend the target lock, reroll both dice. Interesting. Well, uh, praying for that crit. Not it does not. Mango oh, Cannon's, Mango Cannon. Uh, two. Yeah, hit crit. So Reaper going to take uh, one splash damage and a... Um, so Harpoon hit. triggers. The Reaper takes a face down damage card. Then he takes a crit. And then Whisper takes a damage. And... Table Judge just judging if Quiz takes another one there. Looks like no. Whisper takes a shield. Yeah. Stevie B's list here just pulverizing these Imperial Dam aces. On looks like one. damage cockpit to me. Is that what we've got? Uh, so pilot skill zero on the Reaper. Not really sure if that's uh, that's called a free a, one there. A big a big change or not? The game state is unaltered. <laughs> All right, so now Perry's turn. He's going to try and take his return shots on uh, ten num. Praying to God he had a focus token on Whisper, but he took an evade. Uh, looks like they're going to take Whisper He's shoot, on Nim. Shooting at Nim or checking at it. All right. See, me personally, I would shoot at 10 num here. You've got range two with both of them, and Quiz is range one everywhere. So um, both of them with no defensive tokens whatsoever. Rolling one lonely agility. I mean, four, uh, Perry's got to get something off the board this round. Perry has the ability to destroy an eight health B-wing um, with 10 dice. He just has to roll good, Devin. I, I, th I would prefer to see him get Nim down, Nim off. But we'll, uh, we'll, yeah, but we'll you can't kill Nim in a turn. You might actually be able to kill a B wing. There. There's a there's that crit token reminding him he's pilot skill zero. He's got to go first instead of first. I don't always play X wing, but when I do, I use crit tokens. Not what Perry wanted to see. Rolling, uh, forgetting that dice. Perry We're rolling hot, steamy garbage. Two hits. Not what he needed to see there, Tim. Could have been better. Reaper rolling the evade. Oh. What? The B-Wing will only evade. And the B-Wing will lose one shield. It's not what you want to see when you shoot at a B-Wing there, Devo. So, um, Perry in a position here where he needs to remember his advanced cloak device, considering the cloak, considering his positioning, not entirely sure if the cloak is effective. He can't decloak to his left. 
He right. can't decloak to his right. So if he were to cloak, where would he then go? He's considering the cloak, Devin, and I don't think the cloak's the right idea. I mean, if he decloaks forward and gets behind these two bombers, they're just going to bomb him. Travis is working on it. Sorry, I'm getting them to fix the uh, what's going on over here. Uh, it's still not right, but we'll figure it out, folks. The, uh, the damage. Ten Num should have uh, a crit underneath his shields. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Captain Nim is down one shield. So, what did the Inquisitor shoot at? I was trying to get the. Uh, so, right now it's the quiz, just rolling hot fire Great, on good. the B Wing. Thank God, something went Perry's way this round. Uh, rolling another evade. Not sure why they rolled two dice there. Going to have to probably call that one out and roll again. Inquisitor, of course, being the quiz. Always rolls his attack at range one. So the B-Wing rolled too many dice. Excellent question from the chat about uh, whether or not he loses a... Whisper does not lose a cloaking device when uh, she receives damage. You're thinking a stealth device. The advanced cloaking device is a, uh, a TIE Phantom only card that gives it a free cloak action after uh, she shoots. So the Inquisitor doing the proper amount of damage to 10 numb there. Are they gonna re-roll that die there, Devin, or are they just gonna deal the damage? Or I don't know what they're I don't know what they're doing. Okay. No problem. Well, we're just explaining to our viewer about the uh, the difference. Absolutely no problem at all, viewer. Do not need to apologize. Um, well he's uh, you can tell by his name he's from New Zealand. Typical Kiwi, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, they're the Canada of the South Pacific. They just gotta apologize, just like us. They're not the Canada of the South Pacific. Of course they are. I've lived there. I promise you they're not the Canada of the South Pacific. Australia is the America of the South Pacific, and New Zealand is the Canada of the South Pacific. I'm going to remove myself from this conversation because <laughs> it makes my blood boil. Does it? <laughs> How so? Oh, please. Please help me. I just spent a we lovely weekend with six folks from Invercardle. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. <laughs> All right. I don't know. So Steve's going to bomb again with some proton bombs, and Perry's going to slow roll, I guess, and try but, and do but damage. But the dice! <laughs> I don't know. If only my trajectory simulator proton bombs would hit. I'm trying to make this exciting. <laughs> How do I make this exciting? Okay, so Steve's damage is still incorrect. Um... Captain Nim is at full shields, but has taken a crit. Yeah, we'll get that um, corrected in no while. There's and no Tendum has taken no hull damage, but has lost three shields. Tendum has, of course, the stun pilot crit, where he, if he takes a bump, he takes a damage. Which is uh, would be great. I think uh, if Perry had a medium-based Reaper, he'd be able to like get in there and get in the way and bump things up, which I've been enjoying, uh, flying that medium-based ship. Uh, but uh, I... Hell, I think he might still be able to do it. But whether he can do that and avoid the proton being proton bombed off the board is uh, another story there, Timbo. Well, let's do a quick ordnance check here. We've only had Nim use ordnance, so we've got one harpoon missile well, spent on Nim and one pro uh, proton pro bomb spent on Ten Num. Correct. So we've got Ten Num left with a proton bomb. Nim's got two bombs and a harpoon left. Now. Steve has Sabine Wren. He does. They missed the trigger for Sabine Wren to go off when he bombed the uh, Inquisitor. They did indeed. It's I'm a, not going to tell you. It's a table. lot of janky triggers to remember there, Devin. It absolutely is. It's a janky list. Is that a jank list? I mean, it's got a B-Wing. It's got a 50-point B-Wing in it. It's got 10-num in it. I mean, on one hand, this list has 10-num in it. On the I mean, other hand, it it's has, got two trajectory simulating proton bombs. I don't know. I casted we're, an entire regionals of trajectory simulating proton bombs. Yeah, they're about as much fun as a uh, bucket with a hole in it. But you know what the thing is, though? I'm getting PTSD. <laughs> PTSD <laughs> from all the TS. Uh, all right, so we've got Perry up Shit's Creek without a paddle here, and he's got to find a way to keep the pressure up on the B-Wing. B so like the B-Wing, of course, only having taken three damage last turn. I imagine he's got the target lock from Whisper. He's going to try and set up a bump here with the Reaper, right? Now he's going to... He might even K-turn with Whisper if that's possible. 
Um, so it'll certainly be interesting to see what happens. It's not really easy to slow roll with Whisper, but he could do a two forward, and that may clear at this point. So uh, it looks like he's jamming both of his both of uh, Steve's ships, which is great. Excellent use of the jam action. ISB slicers removing that action economy from his ships. Uh, and looking to see now where the Inquisitor goes. I'm very interested in this. Uh, he needs the barrel roll here, in my mind, in order to avoid being proton bombed. Uh, but again, there we are. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Hopefully setting up a bump there, keeping those jam tokens on those ships, nullifying Nim's TLT on at least two of his ships there, depending on Nim's maneuvers. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Nim can still trajectory sim a bomb here. It's um, it's not in a great situation. But just to remind our our, uh, our viewers, this is a 1.0 jam, not 2.0 jam. So when a ship has both a jam token and a focus evade or a blue target lock token. Now, I don't know if that was a bump. All you got to do is remove that token. It was a bump. It was right. a bump indeed. Whisper has bump, meaning that a... Trajectory Simulator Bomb from 10 Num could, in fact, uh, get both Whisper and the Scarif Base Pilot. So we'll see what happens here in a moment here, folks. Perry's list has moved. Stephen Buey going to uh, decide what he's up to. Trajectory Simulating a Proton Bomb, because that's what you do in this list. Oh, interesting. He's doing it the regular way. Interesting. That looks like it may hit the the Reaper, the Reaper, and possibly Sabine. Nobody, or he could just Captain Nim hold that proton bomb. One forward from the B wing is going to slam right into the Reaper. That's good, keeping the Reaper a little bit alive, reducing the uh, number of shots on it. Although it will. Uh, Oh, no, it's a turn from the B-Wing. Interesting. That leads me to believe that we're probably definitely going to see um, the B-Wing. Uh, All right, we got We're probably going to get him hold that bomb now. Well, that's interesting. Well, neither of these uh, ships on Steve's uh, can take an action that will last because, of course... As soon as they take a token, that jam token will kick in right away and make them shred it. I mean, now's a better time than most to strip that uh, jam token. Uh, yeah, especially when you're not going to get shot at by two ships, right? Well, he's, the Inquisitor has a shot. The Inquisitor has a shot. I'm not convinced Tenum has a shot back, though. Now, who has the Inquisitor target locked? I believe uh, all of the ships have target locked uh, Tenum. Yeah, yeah there right. it is. So the Inquisitor... As always, has a range one shot there. Three dice, can't kill 10 num, but could put, put the pain, bring the hurt. Uh, especially, you can see Steven sitting there thinking. Looks like he's gonna barrel roll to uh, to arc dodge. Not a bad idea, getting, uh, you know, not getting shot is oftentimes better than getting shot. The most reliable green dice are the ones you don't have to roll, Dev. Absolutely. Fickle, fickle, fickle green dice. And the proton bombs from the B-Wing are Gone. They are spent. So we've only got two proton bombs left in the play. They're both on Nim. If Whisper makes it out of this without dying, uh, it could be big trouble for Stevie Wonder here. So we've got Nim in a position where he can trajectory simulator another bomb here, but he's almost definitely going to hit. But on to ten num if he if he decides to let it explode. I feel like they may have accidentally just picked up the marker for the Inquisitor. Nope, it's still there. I'm blind. Uh, no, I think they actually did just pick it up. <laughs> yep. Luckily, our yeah. table judge there catching that small mistake. No big deal, especially considering Nim didn't trajectory simulator a bomb, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, what is the pivotal rule of the prototype Toronto League, Devo? Quite casual. That's it, folks. At the end of the day, it is a board game, and we're all here to have fun. Isn't that right, Victor? Big thumbs up from producer Travis. Victor didn't bring two trajectory simulators. <laughs> yeah. Fair point. Uh, 
We've got a whole lot of seriousness. Not, not what I expected from this round. No, but you know what? <laughs> Steve didn't get here by just playing lists. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. The man is a pilot. I've played against him. Yeah. Um, he, he flies good lists, and he flies them well. So so they've, have they just decided to move on and just ignore the proton bomb? It's entirely possible that Nim has held the, the proton bomb. Hitting the Reaper with a proton bomb is not worth it, I think, especially when you can actually control where those two aces are going next turn. If you leave that proton bomb where it is, uh, you're almost definitely going to hit Somebody next turn with it or somebody else. Now they and are he's letting let it, go, it off. go off. All right. So I'm gonna hit the Reaper. It misses the quiz. Misses Whisper. One face-up damage card for the Reaper is a damaged cockpit. And they remember the Sabine damage this time. Sabining the actual Reaper because it's the only one you can. So the Reaper's down to one health. Probably gonna get finished off by that Nim TLT this round. A damaged engine there. Yep. Damaged engine. TLT for one. Perry. Eating that damage. Down goes the Reaper. Okay, B-Wing with no shot back to Dials. That puts us at about 23 minutes into the game here. And Stephen Bowie up on points by 25. Now, Whisper can hard one into a Proton Bomb dropped by Nim. Well, who's, and yeah, but Whisper can also Quizzer, barrel roll. Inquisitor can hard one into a proton bomb drop by Nim, but maybe boost out of it and hunt um, and hunt the B wing. I, I think the B wing is is the wrong choice. I feel like uh, Nim's got a little more oomph to it with the TLT. It's a little more tougher. Whisper's biggest threat now is no longer the bombs. It is that TLT mainly because. The TLT shoots at one pilot skill ahead of Whisper, so Whisper's advanced cloaking device can't kick in here. That being said, if Steven turns both his ships in here and manages to finish off that B-Wing, and one of his aces goes into the late game against Nim, either one of those ships, Whisper or Inquisitor, preferably the Inquisitor, would have a decent chance against Nim in a late game one-on-one. -on -one. You think so? Yeah, because you can bug out, you can come back in, you can do lots of different things. I mean, Nim is hardly maneuverable. He's a scourg for criminy. He's still got that TLT. Well, that's what I mean. Like, the Quiz would love it because he's got auto thrusters, but at the end of the day, you got to finish off one of these two and even the odds here. You traded 25 points of a Reaper for uh, three bombs, a Harpoon missile, and three shields off the B-Wing. Perry's definitely behind the, the eight ball in terms of points, but that Reaper paid for itself in terms of ordnance spent, I feel. Yeah, that, that harpoon wasn't going into Whisper. When I feel with you have when you have two PS10s lined up on Whisper who's not cloaked, and you have a harpoon missile, and you have a mangler cannon, I feel like Whisper's Whisper's the one to hit. You harpoon it, you get the shields off, you mangler on a crit and then you hope Whisper dies, and you deal with the Reaper later. Yeah, it all goes back to about target priority, right, Devin? I mean, PTL is all about fun and, uh, and have a good time with your, board, with your mates, but, uh, you know, when you're playing a game, you got to decide... I'm, I might know how to have a good time. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not talking about, you know, dancing with poles. I'm talking about... Oh, the, the, the most viewed PTL finals of all time with me and Aaron flying a bunch of janky Imperial shit, shit at each other and like me being really, really bad but having a great time. Oh, that was that was uh, Season 9 finals in the VWTV Live archives on YouTube. They yeah, are, Season nine's a great one. That is grab a bowl of popcorn because we went through the entire uh, FAQ that got published shortly before that. It was actually the Trajectory Simulator FAQ and the Death of the Jumpmaster V FAQ. It was a good episode. Now... Perry taking some time with his dials here, deciding if it's time to disengage and re-engage, whether gotta, he needs to keep the pressure on. You gotta bait the it's hard to bait the bomb, but you gotta bait the bomb and disengage and get out, come back in, get another snipe off on ten num, try and get him off the table. You know, we're all 
Yeah. I mean, it goes it goes back to what I was saying, Dev. I mean, for... Because Nim's got four bombs, remember. He's got two thermal detonators with stress, right? That's hell on earth for the Inquisitor. And he's got two proton bombs. So he's got... Nim's still got stacks of bombs there. Just ready and waiting to go. It's an unholy amount of bombs. Shout out to the X-Wing junkies. We've got them jumping into chat. Here's Whisper. Is this a K-turn? I can't really see from this angle. It's a red on that dial there. Let's spinning it around. Look at her go. Now, so if Steve didn't go fast enough with 10 numb, you know, Perry's going to have a four-die shot with three rolls coming in. He can spend that uh, any of those blanks, any of those focuses from that reroll to strip a shield off of uh, 10 numb before, uh, before the damage is dealt. So that'll be certainly interesting to see. Well, I'm loving the K-turn from Whisper here because it gives him plenty of time to re-engage. Also, you've got Whisper's ability to chew bank right, uh, ship right, I should say, next turn. Keep the pressure on the B-Wing. We're just waiting on an action here from Nim. But Krennic makes the K-turn on that on that Whisper so good. Yeah. He can spend that die. He still, he's got F he gets the Krennic gives the FCS like ability. He can get that target lock. It's great. I did not expect that from the B-Wing. He's going to be able to barrel roll in now. And uh, unmodded, I guess, shoot away at Whisper. Yeah, I was going to say, he's still got that jam token from the previous turn, Dev, because he barrel rolled last turn. So he's going to get no mods on this shot. But as we all know, 10 Num's pile ability says that if I... Well, like I said, he's going to barrel roll. Out of but arc. Okay. I did not expect him to go out of arc. I expected him to, like, guarantee that shot. I mean, I would have shot at Whisper, but that's just me. Tim goes ball to the wall, folks. Just right in there. <laughs> YOLO. That, uh, that sumo game, great game from this season. Your two ladies. Last week was terrible. Oh, come now. It was great. Beat like I stole something. Yeah, well. I rolled two crits on one debris cloud. That's a We same just have different time. definitions of what entertainment is. For me, it's you. Oh, it was top quality television. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> You want to watch two absolutely masterfully painted ghosts get spanked and watch that video. I like watching you roll three crits in a row going over to Reclouds. I appreciate that. Or how about uh, two hits on, what was that, 12 dice I rolled? Two hits? Well, it's closer to uh, 16 dice. Oh, my but, God. Uh, yeah. Dice gods had not accompanied me to work that day. It happens, boys. You and your ladies. I uh, do like all right, so here we got... And um, Steve's real quick with his dials. He's in. He's ready to go. Uh, Perry's made a decision for Whisper, but I think he's still thinking about... Oh, no, we've got Inquisitors dialed down on the other side of the table. So... Quiz going to have to decide which direction he wants to re-engage here. No matter which way he goes, if he were to go two turn or one turn left, he's not going to get uh, enough rotation on a boost arc to get Tenum back in arc this turn, I don't believe. Now, Whisper is... Has a TIE Fighter dial. He's going to be doing a two bank or a two forward or I think a three forward. So, like, he's real limited right now. I mean, honestly, I, I would YOLO. I would take the one turn, one turn left, take the five die shot on Tendum and go for the kill. Tendum can't take a defensive token and he rolls one green die. So, if he doesn't kill you, it should be very unlikely given how much health Whisper has, you might kill Tendum. But that's just me. I mean, Perry's the Inquisitor got so running. few options in this game, right? Yeah. Steven putting it the direction he wished it was going. Now, maybe he can uh, boost. Yeah, here comes the boost. Wrong boost. There we go. Yeah, he's coming around the rock. <laughs> I'm calling a Talon roll from Nim this turn. Get himself turned around for that ordnance shot the following turn. Now, this is great. If we did see that hard one from Whisper or a two bank barrel roll, then um, certainly. Oh, well, Perry going to play it safe. Well, like I said, uh, that barrel roll brings him in where you wanted him. Plus, if you're, if you're uh, stressed, you can't cloak after the shot. I guess it's not a bad idea. That's important. Oh, look at that. Who called it? Now, if, you, uh, if you've if you been a gambling man, you, you'd owe me a shiny penny, sir. I think I still owe you shiny pennies this week. <laughs> but I think this is great positioning from Perry. It allows him, uh, with an unstressed Inquisitor, if I, if I think so, would say so myself, to finish 
and ten numb off next turn if Whisper is unable to kill him. So that's a two turn from ten numb. Not going to have enough room for a barrel roll left here. Uh, he might. Up board, uh, off the edge of the board, maybe. I'm going to see. I, I bet we see him try. Nope. Moving on to the next ship. No, he was taking a token to get rid of the jam. All right, jam's gone. Both ships unjammed. Hard two from Nim. So you're going to take another turn to get coming about. Doesn't have long-range scanners. Only has guidance ships. Not going to be able to take that target lock this turn. Could take a focus, though. Clear that jam, unless he did it last turn. Getting that jam gone. Now, either way, uh, Whisper's going to have the an focus. advantage. Must have cleared jam last round. Ten -num here, because... If Whisper re-rolls her dice and one of those die is a blank, she can still spend it, get rid of the shield, and then deal the damage. Correct. So It's beautiful. Well, it is a lovely move. We're just going to see from Perry here if it pays off. Ten Num so, going. Ten Num shooting like at Whisper. primary weapon, four dice. Not what you want to see. Not what you want to see. Only going to get two hits. No Mangler Cannon. Um... Shot there. Ooh, taking both shields. Not off what of Perry Whisper. wants to see either. So Whisper down to two health exposed. Perry's best option to keep himself in this game right here, folks. Five Kill dice coming up. It's oh. A lot of paint, not a lot of eyes. My kingdom for an eyeball. Rerolling, keeping the one hit. Rerolling. Spend one. All right, spending one to lose so a shield. Ten num loses a shield. He's down to one not shield. Not gonna be able to kill the B wing this turn. Steven continuing to roll evades on one die like it's his job. Ten I'm sitting on two health. Quiz might be able to finish this guy off the following turn, but we'll have so to see. So now Perry it. gets focus and a cloak. You know. It's an unfortunate bad. position not for bad. Whisper. She cannot I don't think she's gonna be able to fit that two cloak decloak forward. I mean, because if she two cloak forward and then four forward, she'll be out of Nim's danger. But Nim's about to come in and lay in a whole world of hurt next turn here. If, if um, I mean, I did just go through how Nim still has four bombs and a harpoon missile. No, he's got a lot of bombs. And a TLT. Yeah, He's almost da bomb if you were so inclined. <laughs> did you just throw up in your mouth a little bit, Devin? A little bit. Oh, man. Is that what the smell is? Woof. No, I think that's the 40 to 80 stanky nerds playing board games. There's a lot of stanky nerds playing board games. You know what I discovered at Origins, Tim? What's that? Uh, X-Wing players are the jocks of the board game world. I would agree with that, yeah. 100%, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, big shout-out to 401 Games. Let us always cast our, our content here. Just a reminder, anybody in the Toronto area, that they will be moving up shortly. Down. They're going to be uptown, up Young Street, all the way to Lawrence, along with every other small business in the city. Out of the core. It's nowhere to play downtown anymore. Remember, folks, the Toronto politicians might tell you that they want young families and small businesses were in and around Toronto. They actually don't. Hopefully nope. our beloved Premier will change that now. Uh, sure. <laughs> our, uh, our Donald Trump uh, light Our Donald up here. Trump light, yeah. Uh, it's like uh, light. Probably Trump won't, light. won't do that. But we'll, All right, uh, we got a great question from the chat from Ross Carmichael about what the third Imperial ship was. That was a Reaper. We played the entire PTL Season 11. Was. Was a Reaper. Was a Reaper, yeah. We played the entire uh, PTL Season 11 without using any of the new ships, obviously, because they just came out. But PTL League rules do state that shortly after the release of a new wave, the ships are legal. In the case well, we where follow the FFG rules, so if it's out for two weeks, it's legal. So yeah, and then you know you just have a discussion with your your opponent beforehand. Both of the sh uh, players discuss it with a judge ahead of time. You know, are the are the ships of the new wave legal for the finals? Uh, considering 1.0 is not long for this world, none of us had a problem with it. So we all said, you know what, Eolo, go for it. Going to mark the B wing and try the cloak forward here. Table Judge Aaron going to make a judgment call. That is a... I thought you said it was David Grohl on the table. Big 10-4 on the two cloak forward there, Devin. I like it. Whisper decloaking forward. Probably going to take either a turn or a bug out four straight. We're going to find out in just a minute. 
Hard two from the uh, the inky. A rare a rare maneuver for him. He's usually stressed. Not about you, Devin, but I'm really looking forward to the Inquisitor crew in 2.0. Mm -mm -mm, delicious. I love. I'm looking so forward good. to. Nom, 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 nom. So many Imperial crew. All the Imperial Mumbai, crew. Sloan. Grand Moff Tarkin. You may uh, file Tarkin. when ready. Listen, I'm, I'm give or take on Tarkin, but like Sloan, baby. Sloan. Oh, yeah. Like the band Sloan? Like, yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I like them. So Admiral Sloan says that uh, when a ship at zero to three of her is destroyed, the ship that destroyed it gets too stressed. That's and amazing. whenever any of my ships shoot at a ship that's stressed, they get to reroll a dice. Well, I mean, and I now mean, hard to argue with that, right? You got to be sitting, in, and then you uh, you put like death troopers on her, and a reaper. You start blocking, right? You uh, you want to do a linked action? You're gonna push with your A wing. You're gonna do your little cutesy, you know, little like boost into a focus or something like that. You want that stress token? Oh, thank God I got rerolls now. I love it. All right, before the uh, combat uh, round starts here, Dem, we're just going to address a couple of quick questions from the chat. The PTL open in the fall format is undecided at the moment. We're going to have no, lots I wanna, of... No, I want... I'm getting some pushback, but I want the format to be identical to the last one. Okay. You bring three lists. Um, there's no faction restrictions. You bring three lists. People in the past thought you had to bring one rebel, one imperial, one scum. But uh, you don't have to. The only rule is, uh, over the three lists is you can't repeat a pilot. Fair point. Uh, and what we're going to do this year uh, is if you fly each list once, you get a free win at the end of the day. So uh, that means that we're going to do six rounds of Swiss, and then it'll be out of seven, if that makes sense. It does. Now, last year, um, only one person did not do that. I was very impressed with everybody. And then... Um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a special prize for the triple-double. So if you do, if you fly each list twice, we're going to have, like, force tokens or charge tokens or something like that. Some cool prizes. All right, let's get back to the action here. Ten of them taking shots on the Inquisitor. Uh, Inquisitor... Spending everything. Spending his tokens, not taking any damage. Nim looks like he's out of range. So I think he might live here. Clarifying question to the other member of chat. The PTL champs from all the seasons don't have to travel to fight the top Canadians, because the top Canadians are, in fact, in Toronto. So, um, yeah, I mean, Alan Fung's here, uh, you know, uh, yeah, enough said. Tristan Singleton. Tristan Singleton. Yeah. He's from Toronto, right? No, but he'll be here. <laughs> all, all right, we got the open. This is Perry. Come one, come all. Whisper Shoot. taking a shot here, loving it so far. At Nim, stripping a shield. Spending the shield, doing hit crit to Nim. Nim going to roll one evade die, switching his Krennic target lock. Going to spend the focus, take one more shield, total two shields off of Nim. Nim with no more tokens. Sad Panda. So did Nim lose uh, two or three shields in that there exchange? Mm. And... Okay. He'd previously spent that on attack. Fair enough. Uh, so now we should have the Inquisitor shooting at 10 num, and uh, I imagine he is not long for the world. Technically, Manitoba is not west. It is actually nowhere. It's not a real place. So, yeah. Ooh, one crit, and let's see what that crit is on 10 num. 10 num going Folks. through, getting a major explosion, oh, maybe? Roll that other die Weapons here. failure. Oh. So Tendum's Mangler Cannon getting a little bit fewer teeth after that. But unfortunately, with the Inquisitor moving first, we might actually get into a situation where Tendum just 2Ks. Mm. I haven't seen a B-Wing 2K on stream in a little while, have we, Dev? It's been a while since we've had a B-Wing on stream. Since the uh, OT tournament we casted here, a couple, what was that, over a year? God, we're getting old, dude. Speak for yourself, I get younger every day. Yeah, your receding hairline says otherwise. My hairline's been receding since grade 8. It's running away from your face. Uh, yeah, fair, fair comment. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, I would too. That's why uh, my body, I don't have to see my own face. I should talk. I'm the one imitating your beard right now. My beard is glorious. I it's, did just, uh, I trimmed mine it up to this shame, morning. That's for sure. Oh, boy. Oh, Billy, I got a great beard. Oh, Billy. All right, so we've got Tenum and Nim just 
hopelessly out of position here. Whisper going to probably decloak, ship right up board, and then one turn back into the action. Nim not going to be able to take a turn around that rock to get guns on Whisper without He's likely landing safe. on if, it. If Whisper goes to board right, right, to the east side, let's say, you know, uh, towards that's, Scarborough, that's uh, definitely going to be in bomblet ter or trajectory simulator territory for Nim. But uh, yeah, if he goes west or or board left, going, I'm I'm trying I'm trying not to point at the screen, and Tim is laughing at me, really, purely non-visual medium there, bud. I. I'm trying so hard. But yeah, I agree with you. He's going to decloak. Point with your words. Point with my words. He's got, yeah, I agree with you. He's going to try and decloak past the asteroid, do a hard one in, and maybe throw in some more long bombs. Uh, maybe re-engage with both ships at uh, at Nim. But uh, Tendum's got to go down. He's a, a real disaster of a ship for, for Perry. And Whisper without shields right now is just a sad panda. I mean, Nim in a position here to throw a bomb forward, catch Inky. Uh, don't forget, of course, that Nim still has uh, genius. Table judge Aaron showing just an, a completely unprofessional amount of preference to Steven, offering him gum and no chewing gum to Perry whatsoever. We're going to have to correct this in our judge staff qualifications when we're, uh, when we're vetting You have to bring there. enough for everyone in the class. Chewing gum online, eh? Come on, folks. Come I don't on. Know if, I don't know if any of our viewers are old enough to remember Blazing Saddles, but anyway. I mean, uh, his Mel's greatest film. It is probably one of his greatest films. It's also probably one of the most politically incorrect, incorrect, I should say, uh, films of all time. There's more N-bombs dropped in that movie than uh, you're prepared to admit. Wow. He applies the correct amount of reverence to uncouth words. The cor what is the correct amount of reverence? None. Zero. Is that like uh, the correct amount of reverence to Alan Fung's hair? Alan Fung's hair is due an immense amount of reverence. It is. It is. That's what I mean. Like everybody is in huge reverence of it. That's a correct, correct. amount of reverence. Correct. Okay. Although I'm afraid the hair has retired. He has. He's moved on to greater and better things. The curse of the Canadian Nationals. Sorry, Jeremy. So what are you going to say, right? Canadian who won, uh, I forget his name. A gentleman from Ottawa won the first one. Immediately retired from X-Wing. Right away. Uh, the gentleman, Spencer McClung, who won the second one. Hung around for a bit, but uh, has retired from X-Wing. Due to a child. Uh, Alan Fung has now retired from X-Wing. Two years on. Uh, Does that mean that the Jeremy Howard's going to retire next? Bohan immediately retired from X-Wing and stopped playing. Went out on top. Solid choice. It was a solid choice. Peace. I'm out of here. Correct me, Bohan. Get your butt back here. Yeah, start blogging we're, again. Yeah, we're fans. Not. Well, oh, we're fans. We are. We're all fans. We He's all love great, Bohan. Hey, Bohan's cool, man. I went to like two, uh, two or three store champs with him this year. He's stuck down in London. Yeah. Remember that one we all went to in uh, Hammertown? Oh, good times. Black Knight Games, baby. I should fly the, the quadruple aggressor TLT again. No, you really shouldn't. No thought. I mean, and then, now this year we have Jeremy Howard. We do. Who uh, tick, represented Canada talk, well and finished uh, tick, top 100 talk, at the Worlds. Tick, tock. 60-something, I think it was. The, the quitting's coming. The Canadian, the Canadian Nationals curse will get him. Table flip, rage quit, done. Okay, so we've got dials down. Whisper going to choose to decloak here. Gonna, oh. As I suspect, it go up board. No. no. Ooh. Unexpected and awesome. Now, if Nimni leaves a bomb behind. Now, I do like that. It gets him in around Nim, protecting him from the TLT. Be interesting to see what happens. I mean, Nim can just hop over Whisper, genius drop a proton bomb, and then boom. Whisper could go poof, but we'll see. Inky doing uh, a four straight yeah. over the B-wing there. Interesting. I imagine we'll see a barrel roll target lock on Nim, boost target lock on Nim. That He's gambling on Nim going to the left, so that's an interesting... Although, if Nim just... Toodles forward into a two or three forward, and that's a, a bump, and both of 
both of his ships are in the bubble. It's a real safe safe choice there. Tim shaking his head no. He's terrified well, of that proton genius proton bomb. Perry immediately regretting his boost here because now the ink Inky has to barrel roll because a trajectory sim uh, bomb and, and Inky's done. I don't know if he got out of that. Yep, yep, nope, nope, nope. Aaron, what are you doing? Nope, yep. Perry discussing yep. with the table judge where the final position of his ship will land. I've uh, been listening to a lot of curling. Nope, nope, yeah, hard, hard, go. It's fine. Hurry, hurry don't worry hard. about it. Hurry hard. Hurry, hurry. Yeah, All right, one, one hard here. That me. keeps him safe from the bomb behind, keeps him safe from the directory simulator. May not keep him safe from the genius bomb. Tim shaking his head I there. Think, I don't think this is any bueno. This is this is all kinds of no bueno for Perry Lowe here. But you know what? He was he was fresh out of options at one point. Damned if you do, damned. Go if you hard, do. Go hard, hard, hard. Hurry hard. Going for the block. If he blocks, he can't genius. For more information on that FAQ clarification, see PTL Seasons Finals 9 on yeah. uh, VWTVR guys. Uh, sort by most viewed. <laughs> <laughs> most viewed and most <laughs> chirped by the X-Wing Junkies in Manitoba. Woo! X-Wing Junkies, another wonderful Canadian X-Wing community. Canada, of course, full of just the most hilarious and fun X-Wing players. If don't support them on English. Patreon because they don't have the one. Have <laughs> one, but uh, I hear if you mail them pennies, the, it'll work out. Well, there's several members of the X-wing Junkie, as we know, that are about this far away from getting uh, banned from several international <laughs> streams. <laughs> Not to name any names or anything, but uh, yeah, don't feed the trolls. That's all I can tell you. I ran into some trolls at Origins. Oh yeah, like actual trolls. Yeah, they got a problem. They do. Origins has a problem. But uh, they also had some amazing. Interesting. Uh, he's here. he's gone for it with the thermal debts. Gone for a thermal debt. Definitely won't hit. The he's trying. To, that tells me he's trying to get the quiz. Might hit the quiz. Definitely not going to hit whisper. Uh, see, bombs are a great idea in such a f uh, finesse game as X-wing. You need six hands and eight fingers to. Oh, I might be wrong. He might actually be able to hit whisper here. Uh, okay. No, I think he's out. Well, it'll be interesting to see what uh, Tendum did. I imagine it's a 2K, but uh, it could just be... Well, we three bank three there. bank. Going to probably... You know, he can't genius drop a bomb as well. He's already thrown one. Yeah. See, but I think the call there would have been the genius drop it. Genius drop a proton on Whisper. Game over, man. Game over. Whisper sporting 42 points of Perry's list. In jeopardy of danger stranger now. Yeah, I mean, the the permutations about where bombs are supposed to go and stuff like that is... Yeah, he could have dropped that right into Whisper's cockpit, right into his little tri-hug right there in the yeah. front. Like, hey, little Whisper. bomb right in the cockpit. Just kaboom! Yeah, and it's a thermal deck. Shablamo! So you just like, throw it, it cracks the window, and boom. Oof. Stressing him, can't cloak. Yeah. That is no bueno. Now, now, by trade, Stephen B is, in fact, a programmer, a computer programmer. Entirely possible that he hacked Perry's computer to find out what his list was in advance. We'll have to light our pitchforks and get after him after the game there, Dev. I highly doubt this. <laughs> I find that vague and unconvincing. Although, I'm getting quite aroused by the position of Whisper right now at NIM. Pull it in there, bud. I mean, that's, uh, hurry hard. I don't know if Numb has range on this, but I think Table Judge Aaron deeming that bomb no bueno any hitting anybody. He just took it right out of there. Oh, no, it is. It's just black. I can't see it. Going to hit Nim. Nope, we're going to see. It hits all three all of them. All three folks. of them. Wow. We're going to get a dead whisper here if Steven remembers his Sabine. Okay, so we're going to Sabine. Everybody gets stressed. Stress for everybody. All right, so Quiz going to die. How? How? How do you take three? 
Uh, we may have had the damage count wrong there. Producer Victor going to run over and just verify our damage count quickly. Again, I would have killed Whisper. What about Whisper's on one hull here? Um, Ten them going for a shot on Whisper. That looks out to me, boys. Table Judge Aaron ruling that one here. Victor Tra just stepping in to clarify order of operation in terms I'm, of game. I'm stage. sure we just missed something. No problem. In the meantime, we'll talk about some oh, upcoming. Boom. Uh, oh, boom! The Inquisitor reappearing on the board like magic. Looks like Inquisitor also had a cloaking device of some sort. Did he have a shield? Yeah. Now, Steven right. has already nominated the Sabine damage to the Inquisitor, so we're going to... We'll have, we'll have to see what, 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 you know, Table Judge Aaron rules. Uh, yeah, we fly casual at the end of the day here, Dev. And, well, uh, I mean, Tendum now gets to shoot the Inquisitor, so the result may be the same. I'm pretty sure that the Inquisitor's out of range. Because sure. if, if Whisper was just barely on the edge, then the quiz is definitely out of range. Oh, so here's the big attack from Whisper. Five dice, not going the way Perry wants again with that many dice. Well, he, uh, Nim's got a shield, so rolling that. He's gonna spend, spend that the blank. Spend the blank, so the shield goes away on Nim. Steven missing the dice tray spectacularly, continuing to roll evades like it's his job. So hit crit into Nim. Nim on two hull. Crit coming up here in a second. Put it in the dice tray, boys. <laughs> You know it's rookie when a damaged, damaged engine. engine. Okay, so Oof. Nim can't bump. Nim can't turn. He can still bomb like it's his job. Whisper can't cloak. Gets a focus. No one can shoot him. No one can shoot anyone. No one else can shoot. I don't think Whisper can go anywhere next turn without taking a bomb of some sort. Back to dials. No. All right. And the Inquisitor's taken off the board. So Victor just going to make sure that uh, we definitely had range there earlier. I was convinced that uh, Tendum didn't have range. Or was that a TLT shot? It may have been a TLT shot. I think it's a TLT shot. Players just confirming with each other. We're going to talk about the shoot. I'm sure Aaron will straighten things out. Like, uh, like we said earlier, we tend to uh, fly casual. Yeah, we try to. We try. Yeah. Yeah. Big reminder, all you folks out there, that the Prototype Toronto League does have a Facebook page. And, and Turt, our and sorry, Turt Puzzlin just followed. I don't know if uh, we announced followers here. Beautiful. Someone just followed on uh, Twitch. TLT was indeed confirmed. Nim spending the focus for three hits. Ouch! 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 Auto thrusters for two to the TLT. Okay, dokey. All right, Whisper, you got this, Bay. Now, on the Prototype Toronto League Facebook page, folks, you can definitely find information Yes. sported by our fearless and tireless league boss, Mr. Devin Monkhouse here, about all of the upcoming store championship events across Ontario and just over the border of the United States where we like to go plundering. Southern Canada. Yes, yeah, Southern Canada, which mm. is referred to uh, Michigan and New York State currently. Uh, upstate New York. Upstate we New York. don't get down to New York City, no, although uh, it's, just it's, just, it's too far, folks. Yeah. Yeah. We'd beat them if we went down there, but... Uh, Lower Canada. We'd deny not... We'd, we'd den not to. It's, uh, it's too far. Our shit-talking game is taken up to a whole other level today, I swear. Listen. <laughs> I took my... Uh, I got a wonderful gift from the X-Wing Junkies. Oh, did you? Uh, I, I did. There's a, a set of target locks that on one side says the War of 1812, and on the other has a burning White House. I had to explain those to Dion when we were casting <laughs> together in pa in Origins. He's like, what are those? I'm like, they're War of 1812 target locks. He's like, what are those? I'm like, oh, how do I put this? Uh... Yeah. So the British burned down Washington. Awkward moment. <laughs> Canadian help. I was playing this one chap, and every time I put them on the table, he flipped them over. <laughs> and we just went through the game flipping the target locks upside down and right side up. Maximum disrespect. <laughs> Completely. I oh, also, there's a lot of really healthy cross-border competition. There I also on Carolina a, crates, Canada, U.S. target locks as well. So. I also got uh, at least... I got X-Wing Junkies uh, range rulers on Dion's Gold Squadron stream at least three times. Well, I mean, VWTV we Live. We got PTL templates there. V 
We don't see gold live. standard of international X Wing. Gold standard of international X Wing streams. That's what we're according to Gold Squadron. So that's what we're doing today, Tim. Yeah, that's it. Gold squad, gold standard casting that's tonight, it. today. Some top notch pithy banthas going back and forth. This is nothing but a tough decision for Perry. You can see him sitting there making it this decision right there. I hope it goes hard. Four forward barrel roll. Get out of dodge. Pray for Mojo. Hide behind a debris. Well, there's like literally six different un uncancelable damage points that could come his way from four different directions this turn. Yes. <laughs> He's got two haul. Oh, Billy. Now, he should have one haul if he was hit by the thermal detonator. Thermal detonator does damage, does it not? It does do damage. Whisper should be on one haul. That's true. Darkest timeline. It is the dankest timeline. Whisper should be on one hall, correct? I mean, I don't see a damage card on Whisper's card up there, but uh, sorry, we'll get that affected. Yeah, we're on a chat. We're already talking about it. Don't worry about it. Don't feed the trolls there, Dev. Oh, Billy. Oh, look at that. Look at those upgrades on Captain Nim. That was like the producers, Victor and Travis, were... Uh, because she got hit by a thermal detonator. That's why she's stressed. She got hit by a thermal detonator. Yeah. Anywho, uh, we're going to be wrapping up. They were they were shocked. Well aware, well ahead of a one hour timeline here, Dev. So, is there anything else we want to talk to our viewers about? Thank them very much for following our season eleven videos. Season eleven's been great. Season twelve is going to be nonsense. I promise. Is this the the first two point no. season? No, we're still doing our little one point gonna... bridge thing with Saw Gerrera's Renegades. We're gonna have season twelve in the summer, and uh, it's gonna end in September. I'll, and end we're... You, I'll end you in September. Don't tease me like that. September is when, of course, the members of the Prototype Toronto League and Grand River X-Wing League will be attending the Coruscant Invitational. Whoop, whoop. whoop That's whoops. October. October 4th, October 5th, 5th, something like that. Yeah, the Americans were kind of... Our partners in crime, the Grand River League. The Americans were kind enough to book the event on Canadian Thanksgiving. When we told them that, they're like, what do you mean the Canadian Thanksgiving? Like, yeah, Ours our, was our, first, our, folks. Our harvest comes before you, jerks. <laughs> As a reminder, there will be members of the Prototype Toronto League who are going to be uh, in search of sponsorship for the trip to Coruscant this year, including mm -hmm. um, Mr. Cameron Murray from the Grand Winter X-Wing League who received the very first hyperspace qualifying invitation. He did. He did. Uh, Mr. Kelvin Lau, who oh. was a formidable... Um, the mighty Kelvin Lau. The mighty Kelvin Lau, myself included. And uh, we're going to get you on that uh, th that uh, wagon over to uh, Minnesota later this year. Are we going to have? I'm. You know what? I'll apply for a press pass. Press pass. We'll uh, we'll figure it out. I would never give you a press pass. Uh, I'm I would a, give you a troll. Pass I'm a legitimate I reporter, sir. I'm an X-wing content creator. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not going to be able to barrel roll onto that cloud. Going to have. Sorry, to, uh, he's got a collision detector. He does have a collision detector. He's. I'm sorry, the Tim. Barrel roll. He has to take it now. And take another stress. Not a bad decision, actually. I think he's safe from bomb range unless Nim two turns left and then just genius bombs. That would be bad. That would be bad. That would that be would less be. than ideal at this point. Three bank genius bomb. Mmm, delicious. All the bombs. Nom, 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 nom. As a reminder, our viewers may not be aware, uh, the Kurosan Invitational is the event that's harder to qualify Perfect. for than Worlds because you actually have to win or place at a System Open Series event. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, just a top... Um, Steven being very uh, coy there. Oh, I love Steven's positioning here. He's just taking his time, letting it do it. Now, Whisper only having uh, one stress because he did a two, cleared it, barreled onto a debris cloud, got the second one. So Judge Aaron P. going to genius drop this bomb, shredding the extra munitions token. Probably going to clip Whisper there. So I think that hits. We're going to take this opportunity and thank our VWTV Live producers, Victor and Travis, again for helping Barry us Barry and Steve this. shaking over it. Our two rookies in their epic grudge rematch. Stephen Buey is PTL Season 12 champion. Devo, any final thoughts before we wrap up? I think you're going to be launching some help to get some of those Canadians down to... Course on open. I'm looking forward to that. We'll we'll 
blast that everywhere. We got the P-Tail Open coming in the fall. I think we're going to push it back from September into November. Pay attention for information coming about that. We're going to put push that out soon. Uh, if you love the PTO, join the group, like the page, follow us on Facebook. You know, uh, more info, more stuff coming soon. More stuff coming all the time. Thanks, folks. I'm Timbo Slice. Subscribe to VTTV. Support their Patreon, guys. Uh, you know, when there's a content creator that you love, give them money. I give these guys money. You should, too. And we're signing off. All right.